Hello, friends. In July 1947, there was a widespread craze of UFOs in America. All across the country, people reported seeing flying saucers. UFOs. The craze began a month ago on June 24, when private pilot Kenneth Arnold claimed that he saw nine shining UFOs near a hill around Seattle. He claimed that they were flying very fast, with speeds of 2,000 km per hour. Within two weeks from this, people reported seeing flying UFOs from all across America. This was heavily discussed in the media. This map shows the sites of UFO sightings in America. Media started linking it to atomic sites. They focused on the three areas with the most UFO sightings. These were the sites of nuclear tests. Meanwhile, a man from New Mexico, Mac Brazel, recalled finding weird waste on his field three weeks ago. A tin foil, rubber, and a thin wooden beam. He couldn't figure out what they were. He wondered if they were related to the UFO craze. So he took the debris to Roswell Sharif on July 7. This drew the attention of an army officer, Colonel William Blanchard. He was the commanding officer of the Roswell Army Airfield, RAAF. The next day, RAAF released a statement saying that the rumors of the flying disks had come true. The 509th Bomb Group of the 8th Air Force. Roswell Army Airfield was fortunate enough to gain possession of a disk. The U.S. Army claimed to have received proof of UFOs. But the next day, the U.S. Army officials retract their stance. They said that the debris they were presented with was from a weather balloon. As proof, photos of Major Marcel were released, where he can be seen with the pieces of the weather balloon. After this, the news died down. The media assumed there was never a UFO, but merely a weather balloon. And the public loses interest as well. But years later, in the late 1970s, once again rumors were spreading of an alien craft being spotted flying over the New Mexico desert. The rumors held that lightning struck this UFO leading it to crash, killing the aliens inside it. In 1980, Major Marcel wrote the book, The Roswell Incident, claiming that the debris he had seen was from nothing made on this earth. It didn't seem to be from this world. Since then, the importance of the Roswell Incident kept increasing. New theories have come up. People claim that in the UFO crash, a living alien was discovered, and that the U.S. Army has kept the alien at a secret base. And some people believe that till now, the alien is imprisoned at a top secret base, and that the U.S. Army is trying to reverse engineer alien technology and research on alien life. But this is happening at a top secret location. Area 51. Come, let's understand this mystery in this video. Since the late 1940s, Americans have been fascinated by a mysterious region in Nevada known as Area 51. What exactly goes on at Area 51? Area 51. The Air Force has recently made public an archive of UFO reports and investigations. Are there any alien remains in Area 51? Friends, Area 51 is actually a U.S. military facility found in the middle of a desert, miles away from the closest cities. Going there, trespassing, and going inside the facility is absolutely not allowed for people. Outside, you'd spot such signboards. Photography of this area is prohibited. In case of any suspicious activity here, it would be met with deadly force. There are repeated warnings on the signboards. So what's in there? There was an interesting incident a few years ago involving Area 51. In June 2019, Joe Rogan invited Bob Lazar on his podcast. Joe Rogan is a very famous podcaster. And Bob Lazar is a cult figure who believes in things like UFOs. He claimed to have deeply studied flying saucers and the Area 51. He claims that he was a researcher in Area 51. There, he researched alien technology. And he was tasked with reverse engineering alien technology and improving our modern technology using that. This project was to back engineer the alien craft. I went through the hangar door. And inside the hangar door was the disc, the flying saucer that I worked on. After listening to this podcast, a college student named Matty Roberts was inspired. He wanted to know what the government was trying to hide. He knew that if people tried to discover the truth individually, the government would be able to stop them and silence them. But if a large crowd goes there to infiltrate Area 51, he claimed that the government would not be able to stop them. He created a Facebook event. Storm Area 51, they can't stop all of us. In this event, he suggested that people gather at Area 51 at 3 a.m. on September 20, 2019, to come together and coordinate. 
How to infiltrate the top secret facility. This Facebook event was a prank. This included some weird things as well. Such as doing the Naruto run. In case the military tried to fire at them, the post claimed that they could dodge the bullets by running faster with Naruto run. As seen in this video. Naruto is a Japanese manga series. In which the main character runs like this. Reading this, it was clear that. This was a prank event. But people are weirder, they started taking it seriously. By August end. More than 2 million people confirmed their attendance. To this event to storm Area 51. When Matty Roberts saw that his prank event was so popular, he was scared. What started as a joke on Facebook. Has now reached millions of people. And is turning into an alien enthusiast fest. I just created the joke while I was playing video games, man. And it's taken off to this like absolutely wild monstrosity. The FBI just showed up at 10 a.m. I was kinda scared at this point. Following this, he released a statement saying, Hello US government. He explicitly said he was not responsible. For these 2 million people who had shown an interest in coming to the Area 51. It wasn't so easy for them to do so. Because to storm Area 51, one has to reach Area 51 first. And as I told you, this area is in the middle of a desert. There's nothing else for a long distance. A 250 kilometers long highway goes through this desert. But you won't even find a gas station on this highway. In the summer mornings, the temperature here is above 40 degrees Celsius. And the only thing in this desert near Area 51 is. A small village, Rachel. The population of this village was 54. As of 2019. Not 54,000 or 5,400. Only 54. The reason why this area is so isolated is that Area 51 is on the largest government-controlled land in America, the Nevada Test and Training Ranger. And this area is spread over more than 12,000 square kilometers. Beside this facility is another restricted military facility, the Nevada Test Site, where America had carried out testing of nuclear weapons during the 1950s to the 1990s. Obviously, if nuclear weapons are being tested at some place, where nuclear weapons go off. It is crucial to make this a restricted site. Actually, before we talk more about this event, it is essential to understand the history of Area 51. And in history, there was the Cold War. I've talked about the Cold War in so many videos. That could be a separate playlist in itself. But so many events in recent history, all over the world, are related to the Cold War. There's no end to it. Friends, Area 51 was actually created. During the Cold War when there was rivalry between America and the Soviet Union. Paranoia was growing about. Communist infiltration of unions. In the entertainment industry, and in the military and government itself. This was created as a testing and development facility for aircraft. This is why in the 1950s. The most important spying aircraft in America's history. Were tested in Area 51. Since such critical military weapons were being tested here. Obviously, this area was kept in secrecy. From the outset, the outside world knew very little about this area. As I've told you repeatedly in the previous videos, wherever there's inadequate information, conspiracy theories spread rapidly. Friends, when we talk about spying, today, it is very easy to spy on the internet. For example, if you're using a public Wi-Fi in a hotel or restaurant, for a third party, a hacker, it is very easy to intercept and manipulate your data and you wouldn't even be aware of being hacked. This specific type of spying, hacking, is known as man-in-the-middle attack. To protect yourself from such threats and to maintain your privacy on the internet, I would recommend using a VPN. In my opinion, one of the best VPN apps is NordVPN. They have more than 5,400 servers across 59 countries. It means you can spoof your location from so many countries. NordVPN protects you from man-in-the-middle attacks by encrypting your data so that it is inaccessible to hackers. So even if you're using public Wi-Fi, by keeping on your VPN, you can be safe. Apart from this, NordVPN is one of the only apps that works in countries like China. It can be used to access blocked websites in China. Since NordVPN has sponsored this video, there's a big discount for you. You will get a huge discount on their two-year plan, along with four additional months for free by going to the link 1043 nordvpn.com slash druve. You can find this link in the description below. Go check it out. It is completely risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. nordvpn.com slash druve.
Now, let's get back to the video. In 1954, American President Dwight D. Eisenhower demanded a secret location where they could start a high-altitude reconnaissance program. The story of top-secret reconnaissance aircraft really begins midway in the 20th century. In the darkest days of the Cold War, two officers from the CIA were tasked with finding a location where they could carry out the tests to develop spy planes that could be useful against the Soviet Union's nuclear weapons. In her book Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top-secret military base, Annie Jacobson claims that how she found a secret base in the middle of a dried-up lake bed in Nevada. It was a vast dry lake bed known as Groom Lake. Today, it is known by another name. This was already a classified area where the government was testing nuclear weapons. In Area 51, spy aircraft were being made. Two spy aircraft stood out extraordinarily. The U-2 spy airplane, which looked like this. When the Soviet Union tested their first atomic bomb in 1949, it was almost impossible for America to find out what was happening there. Because they did not have satellites. In 1953, President Eisenhower launched a covert CIA program, Project Aquatone. An aeroplane was to be built on a $22 million budget that could fly 4,800 kilometers without refueling, carrying 320 kilograms of cameras with it, and flying at an altitude of 21,000 kilometers. An aircraft that would go undetected on radar and by anti aircraft missiles. This is how their U 2 spy plane one of the most important spy planes in America's history. Over the next few years, America was largely successful on spying over the Soviet Union using this plane. But on May 1, 1960, a U-2 aircraft was taken down by a missile. CIA pilot Francis Gary Powers was shot out of the sky in his U-2. His aircraft destroyed. Years of hard-won secrecy for the U.S. intelligence community were wiped out in a month. America was forced to admit that. They were spying. But the military was pressured by the government to develop a plane that could not be shot down. That could fly faster and be more secretive. This was the birth of the Lockheed State Route 71 Blackbird. That is still the fastest flying aircraft. Its max speed is 3,400 km per hour and can fly at an altitude of 24,000 m. So fast and so high that there's no chance of it being shot down. It was very important to keep this crucial plane a secret especially during the ongoing Cold War between America and the Soviet Union. So how could they have tested the plane while keeping it a secret from the world? The CIA used UFOs. The conspiracy theory of UFOs flying around. In the language of the U.S. Department of Defense, these are unidentified aerial phenomena. CIA gave wind to these conspiracy theories. The UFOs being spotted around the sky. Neither do they deny the claims, nor do they reveal the truth. The weird-looking, fast-flying, unidentified objects. Were they alien flying saucers? Hired by the government to investigate alien technology. It was revealed that he had fabricated even his educational background. He had a fake degree from MIT. He says that he was doing confidential government research at MIT, due to which he couldn't officially enroll. And so there is no record of it. But still claims to have studied at MIT. It's the same as me saying that I was working undercover. For the government, carrying out research in IIT and therefore studying at IIT. And that's why you will not find my record with IIT. Because there are no official records. Get it? Bob Lazar claimed that the alien spacecraft was powered with element 115. With which the alien spacecraft could create its own field of gravity. Element 115 is a super heavy element. But it's a unique element. When it's exposed to radiation. It produces its own gravitational field its own anti-gravitational field. That's used to lift and propel the craft and to create distortions around it. But several years later, in 2003, Russian scientists actually produced this element and named it Muscovium. And it doesn't create any field of gravity. In June 2013, the CIA publicly acknowledged the Area 51 base and the secret details of its history were declassified. Under the Freedom of Information Act, Basically, this is very similar to the RTI Act. Similar to how RTI is filed in India. To find out details from the government. In America, they have the Freedom of Information Act. Under it, this request was filed in 2005. And in 2013, the information was released by the CIA. Newly released CIA documents. 
officially acknowledge the site for the first time. But if you're looking to gain insight into the aliens or spaceships, you might be disappointed. In this information release, we found out the exact location of Area 51. You can see the location revealed by the CIA on this map. This is in the middle of the Mojave Desert in the state of Nevada. In January 2017, 13 million pages of declassified documents were released by the CIA online. In these documents, you will find several records or the UFO sightings and the experiments carried out by the CIA. In January 2021, once again, thousands of documents on UFOs were declassified by the CIA. Through the 1950s, UFO sightings become the convenient cover-up for U-2 flights. But on May 1, 1960, America's top-secret spying mission is blown. When the USSR downs a high-flying U-2, this time, the agency claims that all of the records they had on the UFOs are now available to the public. Some reports were quite interesting. A mysterious explosion that was seen above a Russian city. A first-hand account of some unidentified flying object. Spotted above Azerbaijan's capital, Baku. Today, the US government doesn't refer to these as UFOs. Because of the heavy association of the term with aliens. Instead, the US government now uses the term UAP. Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. In December 2020, when the U.S. government released the COVID stimulus. At the same time, the U.S. government directed the National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense to release all the records they had on the UAPs to the public. No other argument remains with the conspiracy theorists now. Because the U.S. government wants to release the data they have on UFOs and UAPs. In April 2020, three videos were released by the U.S. Pentagon. The U.S. Department actually acknowledged that the videos which were leaked in 2007 and 2017 were real videos. In August 2020, the Defense Department created a UAP task force to detect, analyze, and catalog the UAPs that are spotted because they can pose a threat to the national security of the U.S. As you have understood by now, we do not know about all the UFOs that were spotted. There have been several such incidents in the last 5 to 10 years where the U.S. pilots observed the UFOs the only difference is that they do not claim that the UFOs are built by aliens, that they are of extraterrestrial origins. There are a lot of different data sets that came in that we looked at, trying to figure out what they were. There were some that turned out to be weather balloons, for example. In fact, there were several. But there were many that. There's not enough data and sensor data. When we have a lot of sensor data on a lot of them, that we couldn't determine what they are. It is believed that the UFOs are part of some highly classified program on which the government agency of some country is working. Even now, Area 51 is an area where next generational aircrafts are tested. Today, Area 51 has become a global sensation, not only for Americans, but for people all over the world, and has become a good source of tourism for the American state of Nevada. In 1996, the state of Nevada renamed the Highway 2 extraterrestrial highway. They decided that since people wanted to believe in this conspiracy theory and go there, they would use it for tourism. But one thing is for certain if you even go near it. Do not try to enter Area 51. Do not trespass, it is still a military facility. If you try to, they will arrest you. A Dutch YouTuber Thijs Granzier. Tried to trade pass into Thijs Granzier. Due to which he had to spend three days in jail. And identified themselves as YouTubers who acknowledged that they saw the new trespassing signs at the Mercury Highway entrance and went in anyway. They have been charged with trespassing. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you can watch more such mystery-related videos.